turn the thing a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, turn the camera around a little bit. Uh, hey, guys! Welcome to another live session from NZ Pocket Guy, just adjusting the camera last minute. Okay, so welcome to this Sunday. Today it is Aura Awareness Day. So if you believe in these kind of things and believe in aura and all these things, be aware of it. Um, and okay. it is. It, it, this, this is what my phone tells me. You could be aware of Aurora Australis. Is that near the same thing? Uh, I think the aura is like, you know, what you see, your soul and everything. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Anyway, most importantly, <laughs> it is French Toast Day. So well, where's my French Toast, Robin? She has a Did lot you of not demands. prepare? <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about everything about traveling in New Zealand. So if you have any questions about traveling in New Zealand, you may want to ask us because we kind of are the experts of New Zealand travel. Why are we the experts, Laura? Well, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide because it literally has thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan your trip to New Zealand. Obviously, when you are able to come to New Zealand, it's it's only helpful for a select few right now that are actually in New Zealand. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with forward planning, right? Um, but if you're not really into reading, because on the website, we do literally have, have a ton of words on there. Um, <laughs> you can come onto the live chat of this live Q&A session and ask your New Zealand travel related questions directly to us. But if you miss the live chat um, or this live session, uh, we also take questions in the comments section of any of our YouTube videos. And when we have time, we go through those questions during the live session as well. But just so you know, times, um, we do this session every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. And we do have a handy uh, link in the description below, which tells you when the next live session is in your time zone. So you can pencil it in. Yes, and we also have loaded about the last, the next 10 live sessions on YouTube right now. So you can uh, go on YouTube and just kind of set yourself a reminder for all of our live sessions. Or ring the bell. Apparently, when you subscribe and click on the bell, you get a notification. But on my own YouTube, I don't. So I don't really know how this thing works. <laughs> I wouldn't encourage it to other people <laughs> if I don't use the function myself. <laughs> exactly. But that does exist. And it is quite handy. All right. Uh, let's go over the comments. So as per usual, we read all the comments that we receive. So just uh, feel free to just uh, type all your questions. We're here for you guys. Anthony Comstock says, Morena from California, USA. If you guys don't know what that means, Morena is the Maori way to say good morning. And Maoris are the local indigenous people here in New Zealand. He says, by the way, I received that package on Tuesday uh, where I am at. I like what you said. Oh, thank you. You're very You're welcome. welcome. So Anthony won a, a little bit of a prize that we did when we reached 20,000 subscribers. So if you're new here, you may want to subscribe when we do 30,000 subscribers. We may be able to send some more prizes. Yeah. And hopefully travel to New Zealand will be a load by then. And so therefore we can actually, you know, give you some awesome stuff to do around New Zealand. Um, Michael Connell says, morning, guys. Hey, how are you doing, Michael? Thank you very much for popping in yet another week. Yes. I love it. Sherry is all the way from Australia. She says, good morning. Good how morning. are you doing, Sherry? Pool lovers say, hello, how are you? How are you, Laura? I'm good. Yeah, how I'm doing well Robin? as well. I'm doing well. I, it, it, you know, we had a wonderful week with a lot of really awesome weather. And now it looks like we're going to have a week of rain. So that's okay. You know, it's, it's spring in New Zealand. It changes all the time. AJ says, hello, guy. What's up? I hope everything is good. I heard from somewhere that New Zealand is going to open borders soon. Is it true? We haven't heard anything here. Uh, they obviously are working on that quota of 250 students that had the right to come to New Zealand. So they try to fill the spot because they only filled 192 of them. So there is really, really stringent criteria for that. So don't don't listen to all the news that you hear. Just only wait for official news to come out because there is a lot of hearsay everywhere. A lot of moment. speculation. Yeah. yeah, a lot of speculation. And, and you know, well, we obviously do some speculation on this channel too, but we make really clear that, you know, this is just a prediction and this is really not, uh, not sure. So um, AJ, what we're going to be doing is that we will be updating our, our border opening predictions and there will be another section about students doing this video. But it's not going to happen until a couple of weeks, until we actually do get a decent amount of news in. So we we have a little bit more information to update that video. But so far, if you have watched our video with our prediction of when with the border open, um, this is our prediction stays exactly the same for now. Um, stray, stray, striker, striker Stry Hoffman, stri stri striker Hoffman. I'm sorry, I probably destroyed your name. 
Striker Hoffman says, hi, guys, watching you guys from Tahiti. Oh, hey, wow. bonjour. <laughs> um, any ideas when the New Zealand border will open for the Pacific Islands? So, Striker, we do have a video on the channel with our predictions. But if I'm remembering correctly, um, our predictions for some of the South Pacific Islands are going to be quite early. So we think that, for example, the Cook Islands and Nui are going to be the first two countries to reopen with uh, New Zealand. However, the issue is Tahiti, and we think that Tahiti is going to be the last country in the South Pacific to actually reopen with New Zealand, is that there is quite a lot of cases there due to the the fact that Tahiti has opened its border quarantine free to most travelers, including people from the USA, which are bringing um, a decent amount of cases. If I'm correct, in Tahiti, you currently have about 13,000 cases uh, over there and you had uh, about 70 deaths or something like that. So that is a little bit high for New Zealand. And I don't think the New Zealand government will be willing to take the risk at this point. So uh, for Tahiti right now, we actually are predicting that for like as last as it's possibly like as it's doable for the South Pacific. So I think our prediction was like um, April or something like that, but I'm, I can't remember just yet. Maybe check our video and obviously subscribe to the channel. We'll do some updates as soon as we have some. Obviously, if we do get did get those information wrong right now, we're not a news source right here. We're just, uh, you know, we're obviously just um, talking about traveling and everything like that. So uh, feel free to correct me if I got some of those numbers about Tahiti wrong right now um, but all, and, um, aside from that we obviously hope that you are staying safe over there you're wearing masks and you are you know you, you're staying kind of far away from people <laughs> uh, Clay Bryant which is watching us from Dunedin um, uh, what did you say you Robin on that uh, Fakari Doko um, that was on last week what did you see me on TV is that what you're saying Okay. Well, you're on a documentary. Okay. Hmm. Well, okay. Tell well, us more about that. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> we were not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Flick me a link to it on, uh, on, on Facebook or something yeah. and, and or maybe, watch it. Yeah. Or maybe Robin has a twin, a long yeah. lost twin. Yeah, it's probably not me. It's probably <laughs> not me. Um, but yeah, interesting. Salty Destroyer says, can I, can I ask you why you chose to live in New Zealand? Interesting oh. question. I know what he's talking about because you did send some footage about the White Island. Oh, stuff. yeah. Is it for the White Island? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, they ask us. yeah Fakari is the name for White Island. Here you go, connecting yeah. the dots. <laughs> yes, uh, they actually, yeah, they, do, they, they did ask us if they could use some of our footage for a documentary on White Island and we did send them some footage. So, yes, that's probably what it is. But that'd yeah. be cool to watch the documentary. So, if you have the link, just give it to us. All right. Uh, Salty Destroyer says, Can I ask you why you chose to live to, in New Zealand? So uh, on, I'm going to say my own and then no, I can say on. So yeah. I worked and traveled in about 16 different countries around the world. And, you know, um, I felt like New Zealand was kind of the right place. There was enough opportunities as well. And so it was the perfect place for me to be able to kind of work in tourism and, and have, have like a lot of fun. Also, uh, I'm really kind of outdoorsy kind of guy. And so I, I do like places where there's not too many people and, you know, there's a ton of hikes around and everything. So that's why we live really rural in New Zealand uh, as well and so yeah that's why I chose New Zealand and uh, also it's really close to uh, it's kind of like the gateway to move to the South Pacific Island which uh, I do really love so um, you know it's kind of like the best base to explore the South Pacific. Yeah. Laura why did you choose New Zealand? Well my reasons are pretty similar as well in that um, I too am quite an outdoorsy person and I do love the um, the access to nature that you have in New Zealand there's many amazing landscapes to see and <laughs> even just yeah you know on your day off and stuff you can go for amazing hikes and um like I, I when I first arrived into new in New Zealand I was really into snowboarding so I was able to do that as well so it, that was pretty cool um but yeah also there's there's opportunities to do well what we get to do with you guys we get to um sort of create our own business and um do this travel guide to New Zealand which um Compared to being in the UK, not really sure it would have been a, a really good um, success to have a travel guide like we do for New Zealand for the UK. It's probably not quite as exciting. So, yeah, um, I get to do um, the sort of job that I love as well. So it's all win-win. Um, cool. And why did you choose to live in New Zealand um, as well, Salty Destroyer? Salty, De I love that name, Salty Destroyer. He was uh, checking out some of our videos like the, uh, the uh, Army Museum. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, Martina, all the way from Germany. She says, hi, all together. How are you doing, Martina? How is it going for you? Uh, Kerti deleted his own message. 
Sherry says, I'm doing well. It's crazy hot here. Yeah. Yesterday was 40 degrees. So that's Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius. And today is going to be the same. Wow. wow. Australia is heating up. I think here today we're probably going to be heating the 12 to 13 degrees Celsius. Oh, at it's most. probably more than that, surely. Okay, well, check it out. Just yeah. tell us. But I'm, I'm cold. <laughs> it um, feels like it. Pool lovers say, have you ever visited Hamilton? Yes, we have a lot of video about Hamilton on the channel, actually. Um, so one of the good ways to find videos about selected towns is that you type Hamilton and then you type NZ Pocket Guide and you find all our video here. We have videos of us visiting the garden. We have videos mm -hmm. of us walking alongside the uh, Waikato River. We have videos of us visiting the Waikato Museum. We have videos of us uh, checking out some of the art galleries around. What is that we've done in Hamilton? Uh, we have been to uh, the gaming cafes. Oh, yeah, there is a gaming cafes there. We are, yeah. you also have a video of us um, uh, going to explore the little town of Raglan, which is just off from Hamilton, which is a surf maker. And there's a lot of things to do with there. Zealandia uh, tea? No, uh, tea? Zilong yeah. tea. Zilong, so that's we also, it. you have a video of us checking out Zilong tea. So, yeah, there is a lot of videos on the channel about uh, Hamilton. So, yeah, absolutely awesome. Hamilton is great. Kiwi Lawrence says, I'm here for the whole time today. Oh, Ooh. yes, celebratory. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, because our musical theater production has been postponed until January due to COVID. Oh, no. Oh. Well, I, I take my whoop whoop back. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, she asks, do you find the South Island harder to drive or more dangerous anyway than the North Island? I feel like I will be nervous driving on the South Island, so I tend to lean toward bus tools. Um. <clears throat> In terms of, um, I think in terms of like the way the roads are, although there are probably more mountainous sort of winding roads on the South Island, um, the roads are actually a little quieter. There's more of a population in the North Island than there is in the South Island. So actually, probably some of the, the biggest hazards on the road are other people. I agree <laughs> with that. I agree with that. Um, I think we're, in terms of any other roads, like, you know, some of the, the winding mountain roads, probably are putting you off on the south island they are completely fine as long as you um you know you take your time you're not rushing and you know slow down for corners quite quite obvious stuff but um you know just and also if you are going maybe over mountain passes when it is uh, due to be snowing or it has been snowing you um have some snow chains uh, available but um, most of the roads around the south island don't really that um it's just precautions if you are going into alpine areas so um yeah but more in the north island there are more people and um and yeah most of the accidents are just other people not really you know driving driving well <laughs> yeah so I, I definitely will second that so i'm usually the one that drives when we do all the road trips and everything like that but um so although the roads tend to be a little bit better on the north island that is true uh, you know, the quality of the roads are not the best. You know, New Zealand is not known for like this amazing, like beautiful, straight, flat highway and everything. So it's not the case. The roads are going to be eh, okay everywhere, right? Yeah. But the fact that there's way less people on the south end and the days in the north end, you have way less of this hazard because honestly, the largest hazard, as Laura said, it's not you, you know, like driving into a ditch. It's uh, other people kind of not been driving as well or scaring you or this and that. Yeah. One of the things I hate the most is when I drive at night and people have like massive lights and you know it kind of completely blinds you and it's just really annoying. So I personally prefer the South Island for that reason. So if I have to choose, I personally prefer driving in the South Island than on the North Island. So here you go, something yeah. controversial for you, mm -hmm. uh, Kiwi Lauren. Um, guys, I'm going to read every single one of the comments as usual, but I'm going to take a quick break right here to remind you that this is the week in which we take the last amount of suggestion for name for that kiwi bird right here so if you guys want to uh, type kiwi bird name and give us some suggestions for the name at the end of this video i'm going to put a survey on our facebook page and on youtube where you guys can vote for the name of the kiwi bird so so far the suggestions we had was kiwi azul Weedbix, St stream punk bp jonah richie dan carters dan carter sorry whitakers hyrenga moa and mate so if you guys want to give some name suggestion for kiwi the kiwi bird we'll take suggestion for the whole hour today yeah. and uh, yeah after that we'll put a vote and we'll name that kiwi bird uh that's just a follow-up on what we did last uh, last, last week. week yeah so if you guys want to check out the previous uh live session go ahead uh it was it was just nonsense and hey you actually i should add nonsense to the list <laughs> but yeah you know i promise that we'll uh, we'll take suggestion for one more week so i am holding true to my word 
All right, Michael Connell says uh, he see Whitbix the Kiwi has moved couch arm this morning. Here you go. So yeah. he's obviously he... <laughs> voting for Whitbix as a name. Quick question: Looking at your merchandise, why is it why is it in Australian currency and not in New Zealand uh, currency? Are you talking about the t-shirts that are uh, at the bottom, th that of, the bottom of YouTube? Yeah, so we designed a bunch of t-shirts because we thought it was, it was fun. Uh, to be fair, no one has ever bought one so far. Uh, but um, the reason why it's in Australia, because I think the platform itself uh, is called T-Springs, and I don't think they do New Zealand currency. So they just, got, they just take the closest to where the channel is based. So that's my opinion. But I think you can change the currency and everything. Uh, but that's the, that's the reason. Yeah, I think it's an American company. Clay Bryan says um, uh, he saw a tiny cameo of me. Um, uh, yeah, he had a problem with the comments. Oh, yeah. And you say, also say good morning. Good morning, Clay. Good morning. How <laughs> good are morning. you doing? Um, so if it wasn't Claire, um, it was one second of you walking off the boat. Yeah, well, that, that's probably some of the footage that we had. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> okay, Striker says, you got my name right. Good. I said your cool. name correctly. I like it. He says, thanks for the tips. I'll check it out. And yeah, I bet uh, it would be the case. So I guess for the delay, he said the numbers that you said are roughly about right. Good day, guys. You're very welcome. So yeah, check out this video. And obviously, we will keep you updated. As soon as we kind of hear anything or we can update our prediction, we definitely will be yeah. uh, doing so. The Hunter Spree. Hunger say, Spree. The Hunger Spree. Oops, sorry. <laughs> The Hunger Spree says, are you expecting any relaxation to the existing border restrictions for student visas? Not really, to be quite honest. I feel that there will be a plan in place, but that's not going to be until next year. That's for sure. And I think like, you know, um, by the time they put a plan in place and, and you know, they get the whole thing working together, um, I feel it's going to take a while. And on top of it, I don't think they're going to be any more relaxed rules. I think they're going to accept more students because students can take the two weeks quarantine because usually students are coming in New Zealand for an extended period of time. Students coming to New Zealand is very different than someone coming for two weeks for a road trip in New mm. Zealand, right? Um, if it's little, uh, little uh, whatever, Whitaker's, we take a skiwi bird right here uh, that's coming for two weeks on a road trip in New Zealand. It's very different that it's, you know, Whitbix that's coming for six months studying English or something like that. <laughs> so you can take uh, you can take the time to actually do the quarantine. Uh, so I think that the rules are going to stay exactly the same. So I would say no to the relaxation, but I say maybe yes to an opening of the quarters uh, in middle of next year to get more students in and restart this kind of massive part of the New Zealand economy, which is obviously students coming to the country. Mm. Now, remember that if you do have to come to New Zealand and abide by the quarantine, the fee for the quarantine is around $3,000. So you have to make sure that you save enough money to be able to pay that. Because if you do not have your quarantine ready to go, uh, you won't be able to enter the country. There is a quarantine voucher. So you have to present that when you board the plane and all that. So yeah, so keep that in mind. Obviously, um, you know, all of that is all mm. Speculation. Um, so far, students cannot come to New Zealand. Okay, that's the flat rules right now. It's just speculation. Maybe that will that will actually happen a little bit later. MD Forward says employment visa holder can entry can entry in New Zealand. Laura, you take this one. Uh, sorry, repeat the question. Uh, employment yeah. visa holder can entry in New Zealand. Um, if you are for overseas right now, and unless you are a resident of New Zealand or a citizen in New Zealand, you actually can't come into the country because the borders are closed to um, all international um, travellers. Even if you do have an employment visa, if you actually aren't usually residing in New Zealand or aren't usually a citizen of New Zealand, then unfortunately, there's no um, process right now to get into the country. Um, even Immigration New Zealand aren't even processing any visas right now. Um, for people to come into New Zealand if they are currently overseas and they're not a resident or a citizen. So it's unfortunate, that unfortunate, but that's, that's just the way it is right now, I'm afraid. Patel Manthan says, when will the border open uh, for New Zealand uh, for international students? Uh, well, <laughs> we just talked yeah. about it. So um, Patel, if you want to just listen to what I say to hunger spree, um, that applies as well. So right now we do not know. Our estimate is at least after April, if not later. Yeah. And uh, stay subscribed to the channel. We will do an update in a couple of weeks with more information as soon as you know we actually do get some. Sherry, uh, she says, do you think uh, do you think doing the Hooker Valley track is too far out of the way if I'm doing a loop of Christchurch? I'd be driving from Queenstown to Dunedin, so I'm worried it would be.
are out of the way. It is a bit of a it is a bit of a detour. Um, it depends how much time you have. Um, perhaps it would be a bit bit too much of a detour. Um, but I mean, it is like that area. It has some of like the most sort of like sort of dramatic scenery of New Zealand. Like you know, you've got the highest peaks in New Zealand, the longest glaciers, and um, so. Um, yeah, if it's going between Christchurch and Dunedin, was that? Um, uh, no, sorry, Queenstown and Dunedin. Queenstown, Queenstown and Dunedin. You want to do a loop mm. uh, of Christchurch. Yeah, um, it, it would be, I mean, if you are on limited time, it would be a little, maybe a bit too much of a detour. But um, it's awesome, though. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have have maybe an extra day or something, just so you yeah, can make you the most the of day, it, yeah, yeah um, then by all means, it, it's definitely worth it. But um, otherwise, um, another way to get to see those, um, to get to see those uh, scenery is if you are traveling um, through Lake Tekapo, because Lake Tekapo doesn't give you, like, you don't have to do an extra detour up to Mount Cook, but there are scenic flights that you can take from Lake Tekapo, which actually gives you some amazing views of the area. Of course, they are a little bit expensive. It depends what your budget is, but that's a really good quick way to see some of the most, like, um, I guess, some of the biggest sort of mountains and glaciers, like I was saying, and all the beautiful snowy peaks. Um, but in a shorter amount of time, that might be not too stressful with the driving and having to, you know, time yourself well. So, yeah, if you want to actually see one of those flights uh, for yourself uh, through our videos, through our eyes, basically, you can type Air Safari and then NZ Pocket Guide on YouTube and you'll find a video of us doing that, yeah. uh, that flight and you'll see if it's maybe the best way for you to actually fit everything in your small time frame. Yeah. Uh, Salty Destroyer says, yeah, I was born in New Zealand at a Linton Million camp up in Palmerston North, so I didn't really get uh, to choose where to live, but I'm proud of it and I wouldn't choose a different place to live. Yeah, New Zealand is pretty awesome. Yeah. Good, good on you. Nice. Michael Connell says, South Island roads are like any road in New Zealand, but uh, are better quality than the North Island. Really? You think the better quality? Ah, uh, I yeah, it would depend on which yeah. one. To be fair, it would be extremely subjective. You know mm. what I mean? It will, you know, you can compare one road with the other, and yeah, it will be subjective. But the fact that there is less people make them safer, in my personal opinion. Yeah, and perhaps because there's less people actually on the roads um, in the South Island, maybe the North Island ro roads do get worn down very quickly. There, there's often random potholes and stuff. But there's there, there's a whole a whole sort of yeah spectrum of road and roads and how good they are yeah. and stuff there's sometimes gravel roads with lots of potholes and stuff it, it depends where you are i guess so sherry is still talking about the hooker valley track and she said it looks like a beautiful track so i'm wondering if it's worth it it's definitely worth doing if you actually can fit it in your time frame mm. but i don't think i will do like i will try to fit it all in one day i think it's just going to be too much so you need to be able to allocate like one day to kind of move your way around get there do the track you know you don't want to mm. rush too much yeah elizabeth kebert says hi guys greeting from austria it's icy cold here in the alps oh, oh my god <laughs> well it's, so we have the, co the complete opposite season uh here in new zealand because we're in the southern hemisphere so as summer is starting for you spring is starting sorry as uh, winter is starting for you, for you, spring is starting for us. So we kind of just complete opposite. So it starts to warm up here in New Zealand. So we are we are on the tail end of the icy cold uh, time of the year. So that, mm. that's pretty awesome. Nice. Are you going to be doing some ski? Are you skiing or snowboarding? Uh, everybody I met from Austria, they're all very much into winter sports. Oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> so wh which what's what's your uh, winter drug? Is it ski <laughs> or snowboard, Elizabeth? Alfin says, is New Zealand is visa visa to new is visa zealand. to new zealand open sorry so uh, alfin right now immigration new zealand does not accept application from people which are currently overseas they are busy working uh, on visas for people which are stuck in new zealand so right now we strongly suggest that you do not apply for visas in new zealand there are many people that have seen their application just expire and your fee is non-refundable none of the fees is refundable so until you know that they will process your visa do not apply for it there it's in the news quite regularly that a lot of foreigners that are applied for visas even before COVID um, had their application expire because of COVID and they had to close and everything and it's legal in New Zealand for them to keep your fee because the fee is paid for um, 
you know, just on application. So be aware yeah. of that. Do not apply for visa right now. That's what we keep on saying actually on the channels. Like we wouldn't apply for visa. If you really want to do it, we can tell you what to do. But we will strongly advise you not to apply for any visas and wait until the situation stabilizes. This stabilizes. <laughs> uh, Kiwi Lauren says, I hadn't really thought of the population before with regard to the roads. Good point. I was thinking of one lane bridges, etc. Maybe I'll have to drive to the South Island next time. Uh, yeah, yeah. one-way bridges, they really, like, the bridges that they choose to make one-way are really not that lengthy. I mean, I can think of one which is a little bit lengthy. On which the is, West Coast. <laughs> yeah, there's one on the West Coast. But there's also one uh, up north, uh, just below Pahia, where you literally have a little, like, the br bridge is all one way, and then you have a little loop right where you can park here, and then someone passes. Oh, over. yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So, most of the one-way bridges are extremely short. So, you have plenty of visibility, and people are very careful around yeah. it. So, I, and I also, wouldn't it's worry not, too much about it's it. Al it's also, it's not like there's, like, a ton of cars on the road. So, usually, you can see very clearly if there is a car. And, the, you know, the signage for the one-way bridges are very clear as well. It's, like, basically, you can tell, like, if you have right away on the bridge and it's very usually very clear to see if another car is coming down the bridge so it's not like you're going to have any last minute like oh I could, the cars came out of nowhere like <laughs> it's usually very easy to to handle yeah um okay she also have the suggestion on Whitaker. yeah i wrote it uh it's one of the suggestions on the list she was suggesting she was meaning Whitaker, which she was explaining oh, last yeah, week yeah, yeah. was a was a musician of sorts i, I if yes. i remember correctly yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> i added to the list sorry yeah. that was the wrong spelling <laughs> Uh, we also have um, Steve as a suggestion from Sherry. So again, if you guys want to give some suggestion for the name of that kiwi bird, give a suggestion. Definitely a... looks like a Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kapai, uh, Kiwi Loren says. Oh, All right, cool. I'll add Kapai as the name of the kiwi bird. Good. Elizabeth, there's any news on uh, opening of your borders for international travelers? So, uh, Elizabeth, we do have a full video on this channel where we predict when we think the borders will open for international travelers. So the best way to find that is that you click on our channel name, then you click on video, and then you find the, the first video you can see, which is big, bright, red, and yellow. And that's our prediction. Uh, that's the fourth prediction that we've made. So we update, we give a lot of our train of thought in it as well, and we give a lot of context as well. And obviously, that just prediction but we go through countries by countries making sure that you know we have um we give you enough information on knowing you know where we come from with those predictions and that's basically everything we know right now aside from that we don't you know we don't have a date of like yes on the 31st of march everything we open yeah. it's not going to there's nothing official like that. just yet and it's not going to be the case yeah they're not going to have one date for everybody it's going to be gradual it's going to be small there's going to be some conditions um so it's going to be it's going to be a process and uh, yeah, just know that it's going to be a, a lengthy process. But I really invite you to check out this video. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, you may want to subscribe because we will update this video on a roughly about monthly basis. As, as, as soon as we get enough basic information, you know, we keep an eye on the news and everything. I take a lot of notes. You know, it does take us a lot of time. Like the last video that we did, it was about nine hours of work to just compile all the, all the data that we had and come up with those predictions with something that was somewhat realistical. Mm. So yeah, so you might want to check this one out. By the way, if you do find our video useful, like all the information that we give you useful, you can always hit the like button. It's a great way to say YouTube that you know we're useful people. Uh, there is 19 of you watching, 14 of you liked it. So yeah, four of you more may want to you know click like and <laughs> be like, yeah, you guys like. are awesome. Thanks to the two people that just clicked like. Did they? Oh now. well, you two. I don't know what your names are, but you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you thank you. And this third one, you <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, where are we? Kiwi Loren says, have you ever walked up Baldwin Street in Dunedin? Yes, it's yes. really steep. So if you guys don't know, <laughs> what is Baldwin Street? Well, Baldwin Street is in the uh, Guinness Book of Records for, for being the steepest residential street in the world. So um, this, this gives you opportunity to get some quite fun um, photos and you can get some quite, you know, do some c cool optical illusions. It can yeah. make it look like the you are the one that's straight and the whole street is the one that's wonky or vice versa so it's just a fun place to check out it will only take you maybe about 10 minutes to enjoy the attraction yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah walking <laughs> up the street it's quite a steep walk um as you can imagine being the steepest street in the world um so yeah it's once you get up to the top there's not really much there other than a than a 
a chair, well, one of those like public benches, yeah. and a bit of a, a bit of art someone's done on the wall. But yeah, it's a thing to do, and why not? Yeah. It, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> no, not worth a complete detour, but it's, it's, it's kind of <laughs> like you know, it's a really a fun point of interest. Yeah. yeah. Um, Martina, she says, I'm fine. It's getting cold here in northern Germany. Foggy, one to five degrees Celsius during the day. During the night, it's minus three. Oh, that oh. just sounds dreadful. <laughs> she says, I'm getting the house decorated for the Christmas season. Oh, oh nice. that sounds more cheerful. You see, that, yeah. that that's that's the way to, you know, amp up the spirits a little bit. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, Christmas season in New Zealand is it's very... I still, so I'm from France originally, right? And I still find it kind of odd to have Christmas in summer. It's just something that I still get a little bit of used to. I've mm. been here for almost 10 years now. And uh, and yeah, I'm still kind of struggling. It's like, is it really? It doesn't feel like yeah. it's Christmas. Does we were it? driving through a town actually last night around 8.30 p.m. And they yeah. have all the Christmas decorations up, but they didn't have the lights on because it was still daylight outside. Because, yeah. uh, you know, obviously summer has longer daylight hours. So, yeah, even at 8.30 p.m., they, had the, they didn't have the lights on. And it's kind of weird to see Christmas lights up, but... Yeah, it's not dark enough to actually have them on and sort of displaying. So I kind of found that a bit weird when we were driving through this town last night. And also another thing that kind of, it doesn't really bother me, but I always feel really sorry for anyone which is dressed like Santa because it's really warm <laughs> yes. outfits, but it's New Zealand summer. So it's going to get really, really, really hot. So it just it just clashes with it. So yeah. I think I need a Santa bathing suit or something, Santa <laughs> yes. shorts. Um, but yeah. So at that point in New Zealand, you won't be the elf because they usually have shorts. So here you go. <laughs> uh, Kiwi Loren, she says, uh, I had one in my cart. I should check out someday. I had one of the merchandise, yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, I think cool. that's what she means. Nice. Yeah. Tell us which one you guys prefer, actually. Tell us, uh, tell us if you like this kind of design, if we should go for something completely different. We were just playing around and be like, oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. Yeah. You know, so came up with some ideas. But if you, if you can, kind of feel like the, the designs are not that great, we can come up with all the stuff. Maybe so yeah, if we had our us. mascot <laughs> and the name of the mascot on there oh, as well. God. Maybe maybe some of those merchandise would. Yes, would be because better. we definitely can do a, a wit big t shirt. There will no be there's no no issue with copyright right here. That does, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, please don't pick something which is too copyrighted. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Clay says serious question. Oof, okay. Does above Auckland actually exist? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> aside, aside from Fangare and Kebringa. The rest I've never heard about. Not on the news, not on the weather, nothing. What's there? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so above Auckland, there is a big peninsula. There's a lot of, uh, there is actually quite a lot to do well, there. It's not really a peninsula. It's just a thin piece of land. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah okay. So it's really big. There is a lot of stuff there. So there is the Tutukaka, no, the uh, Paul Knight. It's Tutukaka, right? Yeah, Tutukaka yeah. Coast. There is the Tutukaka Coast, which has some of the best scuba diving in the whole country. So don't miss that out. That's yes. really epic. Better than Dunedin. Hey, you go. <laughs> you, can, uh, you can check some videos of that on the channel. Uh, there is Goat Island Marine Reserve as well. Uh, yeah, that's still in the sort of Auckland region, but it's yeah. north of the city. Yeah. yeah, so it has like amazing, uh, you know, marine wildlife as well. You can do clear kayaking where you can see all the fish and everything. It's yeah. really awesome. You have the town of Pahia over there, which has amazing water activities. You can do some cruises to see bottlenose dolphins. You can go to a cruise to the Hole in the Rock. There is some awesome parasailing there. You can do skydiving and land on the beach. You uh, And they even let you skydive with a broken arm. There is a video of me in Pahia skydiving with a broken arm, which is really awesome. Yeah, There's even um, vineyards in the Bay yes. of Islands, so you can go do wine tours, yes. um, believe it or not. There uh, is some awesome horse trekking to the there. There's 90 mile beach in which you can drive and horse trek and all that yeah. which is really awesome then driving back down you have the town of dargaville there's what's the place with all the beautiful sand dunes that we stayed and you you, you the hotel have the view of all oh, the, sand the hokianga harbor yeah hokianga harbor is fantastic you know like uh, there's so much maori history there there's beautiful coral forests um there is a stunning dune views mm -hmm. um then you will keep on driving down and there's helensville which doesn't have much, admittedly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of feel like the the scenery up there is very similar to what people think of the Coromandel Peninsula, where it has like nice beaches and nice coastal sort of, you know, coastal scenery. So yeah, in the in the uh, south, uh, north of Auckland, you have all the beautiful sort of beaches and there's lots of really small towns by the beach. Um, and it has the warmest weather in New Zealand. So 
yeah, if you want to combine some of your sort of beach visits with somewhere a little bit warmer, then that's usually the best place to go. So it is a really, really awesome place. Uh, like there's some part of New Zealand to explore. So, yeah, yeah, actually another really g big feature of um, Northland is the Kauri forests because um, yeah. you, you don't actually get Kauri forests any further south than sort of the Coromandel, Coromandel area. Yeah. So um, over there they have the Waipua forest, which is home to some of the largest Kauri trees in New Zealand and um, actually also habitat to kiwi birds. We have um, seen kiwi Kiwi birds on um, sort of like a, in the Trousen Kauri Park, it, I think it's called. Um, they do sort of the holiday park near the area does night tours to see kiwi birds. And we've speaking to, spoken to people on the live chat that have told us they've seen kiwi birds while just driving through the Waipua forest. So that's another really cool aspect of Northland as well, all the Kauri forests. And uh, Clay, we do have video of pretty much all the activities we just mentioned here on the channel. So take your pick. There is really a lot to do there. So I know it was a bit of a cheeky question, but it's a really awesome part yeah, of New Zealand. But we will take explore. it seriously. Yes. We will seriously also, answer it for you. You said serious questions. So we don't take any sarcasm on this channel. <laughs> yeah. We take everything serious. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, thank you to all of you guys that actually has click like. Now we have 18 viewers and 22 likes. Awesome. Math don't make sense, <laughs> but that's awesome. You guys, are, you guys rock. Um, all right, so Thiwanka Nadishan Del Desliwa. Oh, I'm so sorry. That, that mm -hmm. was. I hope that was an okay pronunciation of your name. Says, how about the board opening for international students? Any predictions? So yes, we definitely do have predictions, and we are, we actually think that borders are going to open uh, depending on your countries of origin, right? So they they're not going to just say, okay, on that specific date all the students can come to New Zealand. That's not going to happen. It's going to depend. It's going to be gradual and depending on different uh, countries, right? So that's why we have made a whole video with all our predictions. It's a 25-minute video where we put all our train of thought in there and we give predictions country by country. So no matter where you're from, you know, if you're from uh, the US, if you're from Germany, if you're from India, if you're from Singapore, if you're from, uh, you know, Australia, if you're, if you're from Tahiti, uh, you know, all places in the world, we actually went through and we kind of like gave somewhat some predictions obviously they are just predictions and they're probably going to end up being wrong but it gives you a, a, um, a bit of a of an understanding of what kind of time frame you'll be looking at yeah so yeah it is going to be a slow process for sure so i invite you to check out that um that video that gives you a lot of understanding about about that so to find it, it's pretty easy you click on the logo of the channel so you are boom on our channel and you're like what then you're going to click on videos and then you're going to uh, scroll a little bit around the videos and you're going to find the first one that you see that is red and yellow. The, the thumbnail is red and yellow and it says prediction. So border opening predictions. And then you're going to be able to have uh, to have all our train of thought. Speaking of the channel, by the way, this week we reached a milestone, which means nothing to you guys and, you know, a little to us. But, you know, <laughs> just, uh, but we have reached 2.5 million views on the channel. So that's pretty awesome. Ooh. So let's keep watching some of our videos. Let's keep watching awesome things to do in New Zealand. And let's reach 3 million views at some point. I don't know if it matters too much, the amount of views on the channel. But that's awesome to see big numbers popping in. Yes. I can't even count that high. Can you not? No. You just count on your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi Lawrence says, is New Zealand feeling quiet right now without the hordes of tourists coming in? Uh, and are there any tourists? We were traveling in New Zealand in March and are still stuck there. That'd be a mm -hmm. pretty sweet deal. <laughs> Actually, there are. I think the latest numbers they were saying that is about 20,000 people which are here on, they were here on temporary visas in New Zealand and got stuck here. And so, and we actually did have some friends that still had some family members that stayed an extra like three months, but then they got a rep repatriation Say that word. Repatriation? The repatriation flight. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, back home afterwards. I'm not even sure I said it right. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, there are some people which are here. Now, does the country feel quiet? Um, well, actually, at this time of the year, you would start to see more motorhomes and camper vans on the roads, which you... May, you still see a little bit of because a lot of um well not a lot of kiwis but some kiwis do travel their own country in their own motorhomes and stuff so yeah it, i guess it, it does actually feel a bit quieter um but even uh yeah we did see some um we did see the odd tourist actually sort of taking photos in front of some um attractions that we were driving past um last night though so there's like odd people that i think are living maybe in auckland and 
doing a little bit of travel. Do some local travel, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, basically in short, it, it does feel quieter, um, but but not completely dead. So, yeah. yeah. So, so from my take on it, 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 it's, it's a bit more by the numbers, right? Um, usually in summer in New Zealand, uh, which uh, summer is December, January, and February, uh, in New Zealand, you know, we are 5 million people country, right? In summer, usually we get between 2 to 3 million tourists coming. Right, that's a lot of people. That's multiplying the, the whole population of the country by 1.5. So usually it does get quite quite crowded, and you can actually tell that the summer season that kicked in. You know, the parking spots are quite well taken. Every time you drove in, you drive past motel, holiday camps, uh, hotels, and everything, the parkings are full, and and all these kind of things. At this stage right now, we don't really see that. So it's much more uh, it's much more quiet. There are quite a lot of locals traveling around. The locals are also stuck in New Zealand. You know, they can't go overseas. So there is more local that are traveling here. But local, when you travel in your own country, you tend to travel for a shorter amount of time. So a local is going to take an overnight trip. So let's say a local is taking one overnight trip. That takes him about two days. He's traveling somewhere. It goes one place, right? That's fine. But then you get uh, an overseas person that comes and have to pay for a whole flight to come to New Zealand. They come for two weeks. So you basically need between 10 to 12 locals trip to make up for one person coming from overseas and, you know, the amount of thing that they're going to be doing, right? So there is basically, it feels like there is 12 times less extra people and that's a massive difference. So that's basically kind of how it feels right now. There are a few things happening, but when you see a jet boat passing, there's only like two people in there. When you yeah. see, you know, you don't see buses around like because obviously everybody dra- travel with their own cars and everything. So it does feel much more, much more quiet indeed. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's just kind of more my take by the numbers because I like numbers. Yes. Uh, Sherry says, Thank guys. I'm trying not to get my hopes up uh, with the travel bubble, but uh, here in Sydney, we are 19 days COVID free. Wow. I know we meant to get 30 for it to be considered. I have everything crossed. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> to all the hair crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we have our fingers crossed for you guys as well. That'd be awesome to have a travel bubble with Australia, of course. Extreme Talota says, Morena. Morena, Extreme Talota. Thank you for joining us another week. You're awesome. How is it going for in... It's not... Tokoroa. Uh, Tokoroa, that's the name. <laughs> ah, I kind of knew I could picture all the, the carving. <laughs> yeah, I, was I could like, picture ah, the place. <laughs> um, okay, Anthony Comstott say, iFit has it, has it on their training program. So I did it on the iFit. I think he's talking about Baldwin Street oh, yeah. in Dunedin. <laughs> so yeah, so if you are using iFit, which I think is probably an app, which does like uh, walking or training or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Anthony just does love these kind of things. He was asking us to do even like videos of us walking around New Zealand so he can walk alongside. Uh, so yeah, so if you guys use iFit, you can climb Baldwin Street, I guess. It must be exhausting. Yeah, short walk though. <laughs> Kiwi Lorenz says, if minus three degrees Celsius sounds dreadful to you, I won't tell you about the 6 a.m. run I did recently at minus 28 degrees Ooh. Celsius. What is wrong with you? <laughs> minus 28 degrees Celsius. Don't leave your home. Put more layers. <laughs> I don't think I've ever experienced minus 28 degrees. Although when you go to the International Antarctic <laughs> Center in Christchurch. How low does it get? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember how what the minus is but okay. maybe it is about you guys, you guys should watch our video so uh, yeah. tell them what it is yeah so um the international antarctic center is in christchurch it's an indoor attraction to basically do a few th- fun things related to antarctica because christchurch is one of the sort of hubs for traveling to antarctica so they have this international antarctic center and one of the attractions there is um basically going into a giant sort of freezer room and you get to experience minus whatever degree celsius and basically try to weather an antarctic storm and they give you all the coats and stuff to um wrap up warm and then they turn off the lights do a few breezy things and make it really cold so yeah i mean we experienced that but we haven't really experienced any real um minus 28 degrees celsius Elizabeth Kebert says, thank you for the info. I have subscribed. You're very welcome. Oh, cool. Check out that uh, that video. I think you'll find it quite uh, informational. Um, and and you do have, you know, some extra questions about, you know, the borders opening and everything. If you put them at the, in the comment section of, of the video about the border openings, we go through the comments for preparing the next video. So if there is something extra that you need, just type it in there so we can go through the comments. And if we can oblige, we will. 
Anthony Comstock uh, was talking about the Street of Dunedin. I already read that. Michael say that's great news. Read the stats as it shows what fantastic work you do, guys. You guys do in providing such informative content. You're very welcome, Michael. Feel free to share some of our, our videos or informative content. I know you're local, so maybe that's going to help more local discover what we do. So, yeah, feel free to give us a share. And if you guys want to see uh, a little bit of Michael's setup, you can check out our Facebook page. Last week, I posted a picture of uh, him kind of, uh, he was in his camper van checking out uh, uh, the, the, the live broadcast. So oh, that was yes. quite cool. Yeah. So if you want to see his setup when traveling around <laughs> New Zealand, how does a local experience the country? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. Does it does sound like quite dramatic. Like, <laughs> sure that was the right jingle. Breaking <laughs> news. Here's a local experiencing New Zealand. Here's his setup by Michael Connell. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it. Yes, yeah, moving on. <laughs> Clay, which is another local, it says, um, it actually was serious. I genuinely just never heard about anything up there. People will ring radio, people will tell travel yarn, news, etc. I never seem to be from that area, oh, yeah. I'm guessing. So, yeah, um, now I know uh, that I, and I have a couple of videos to watch. Yeah, so actually one of the things I've done on the channel as, as well is that I put some of the videos of the activities that we've done by area, and I think there is an area playlist which is Northland. If you can find it, uh, Clay, flick, flick us a message on Facebook. I always take a while to respond on Facebook because I never check Facebook often enough, but I will give you a link to that playlist if you want to check all of the uh, Northland-related videos that we have. Kishore Border says, hello, good morning. Hey, Kishore, how are you doing today? Um, Anthony Comstock says the app is Nordic track, I'm guessing. That's, that's what you're talking oh, about. Yeah. Kiwi Loren says, I'm actually quite excited to run in New Zealand. I took up running in 2013 and I haven't been back to New Zealand since 2010. So I've literally never run in New Zealand. The cold dust I've ever felt was minus. Two degrees Celsius. Wow. Not fun. No, it doesn't sound fun. But running in New Zealand does sound fun. Uh, we don't like to get that sweaty, so we stick <laughs> to hiking, not running. Yeah. But we have a lot of friends that do love their running or their biking. We have a lot of friends that do uh, uh, road biking, and they enjoy themselves very much. Michael Connell says, we use, so Michael Connell, again, the epic guy, local traveling New Zealand in an amazing <laughs> setup. Uh, I, I'm going to do jingle for you and everything, Michael, every time now. Says we use our annual leave to spend a five to six weeks during uh, February, March to travel the south. And you have five to six weeks annual leave. Wow, that, you have a really sweet deal. Nice. Um, so he said this will be our sixth year, and then we spend four to six days about every five weeks traveling in the north. That is pretty. You're nice. traveling a lot. Yeah, that is awesome. That's cool to make the most cool. of it. So what's on your bucket list for this year in the South Island? Like, is there some places that you haven't visited yet? Is there some new things you're going to be doing? Or do you go to like old favorites? I kind of want to know more. Uh, all right. So Clay says the Tonga River crossing was very quiet. Um, the other, we basically had it uh, the, the other day. So he actually, him and his family came to do the Tonga River crossing about two weeks ago, if I'm correct. Yeah. So he said we ba basically had it to ourselves, ourselves which I hear used to be like a line of sheep before COVID. That is very true. Yeah. So usually you kind of like, you know, you always are behind someone. So if you really saw very little amount of people on the crossing, that should really tell you how little amount of people yeah, are Yeah, that's basically it. That's a good place to go. Or maybe even Milford Sound. Like, yeah. I'm thinking like the two most popular attractions. What about Roy's Peak in Wanaka? Or Roy's Peak in Wanaka. Yeah, that would be a good indication of how quiet the country would be for tourism. If you go to those places and you determine how many people you meet along the way, that would be a good indication. Because usually those places, there's people everywhere. You see people all the time. But whereas usually on most hiking trails in New Zealand, actually, you rarely see anyone. You maybe will come across one or two groups of people on other hiking trails in New Zealand. But yeah, a lot of people like to sort of go to the same places. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's usually quite busy, especially there's, in the Tongaro Crossing and Milford Sound. There's definitely hotspots in New Zealand, yes, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So Extreme Talota say, it's good in Tokora. I missed you guys live streaming last week. I was gone out uh, for a run uh, with a new referee that I'm training to become rugby league referee next year. Nice. Cool. Well, make sure he's well in shape. We've learned that from you this year, mm -hmm. that you had to be in really good shape to be a rugby referee. Ross Benton uh, says, can you dig for a cockles and clams anywhere in New Zealand or just on certain beaches? 
I actually do not know that. Uh, that is a question yeah. that stumps me. Yeah, um, I mean, there are a lot of, um, in terms of, well, there's a lot of fishing regulations, but yes. I'm not quite sure if this is related to picking up cockles from the beaches. Um, I have seen that some people do do that, but um, sometimes it's locals and there's a lot of sort of... Um, land that's kind of you know sacred to the maori local maori people so i think it really depends on where you're going and you would have to kind of just look it up before you go to a certain beach and know that you're going to be picking up cockles and yeah i i would look it up for the certain area you're going yeah. to first uh, so <clears throat> ross a great way for you to um kind of know like where to start finding some information about that so um what usually uh, happens is that most places where you can fish in new zealand there are some fishing shop and there are the, the shop owners, you know, it's it, it's still the kind of actual retail business which still have a really strong place and a really strong kind of use, right? So when you go there, the guys behind the counter, they are absolutely passionate. They give you all the information that you know, and they also can issue you a fishing license. So usually you can buy them also over the counter like that, which is quite good if you do need one. Um, so that is where I will be getting my information. There is also the New Zealand Fishery website, uh, which has a lot of information on like fishing and, and everything like that. So you can uh, you may want to check those one yeah. out. But yeah, sadly we do not know this answer. But we we have a neighbor which is really into fishing. So I'll ask him that. And if you ask me that question again next week, I may have more information for you. Yeah, you're just gonna have to remind me because otherwise I'm gonna forget. Um, Martina Sten say, I think in the Antarctica center, it went down to minus 18 degrees Celsius, yeah, if I remember correctly. That sounds about right. I think so. you're correct as well. So, so we yeah. haven't even experienced minus 28 degrees Celsius. No. We so. went down to 18 and yeah. you complained. And uh, <laughs> that was inside a massive fridge for about only 10 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, here you go. Clever Eve says, hi, good morning house. Hey, I love your hi. little emoji of this heart. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm really into so emojis. Good. So when you guys are putting some emojis, I'm like, oh, that's a cool one. That's a different one. Um, she says, oh, please, when uh, is the border opening? Um, well, there's no been no official information as of yet of when the borders do open to international travellers in New Zealand, unfortunately. So right now, the borders are closed and there is no sort of... There's, there's been no um, official statement to say when they do open, but we do have a video on this channel which um, goes through our personal predictions and our sort of our predictions of when we think the borders will open for certain countries because we do believe that the borders won't just open to everyone straight away. It's probably going to open gradually um, to different countries depending on how well each country is um, handling the COVID nineteen. No, no COVID. 19. 19. Oh, I just had a bit of a brain fart there. <laughs> COVID-19 situation. Uh, all right. Kiwi Loren says, do you have any info on running cycling paths that are paved in New Zealand? I'm quite fine to run on sidewalks and not busy road, but I love a good paved trail. I don't know too much about like paved trail. There is a lot, like for example, like in, in Topo, there's a whole like paved trails. Thing. So usually mm. you'll find that on NZ Pocket Guide under walks, and then you'll have plenty of information. Like in Hamilton, you can uh, you know run along the Waikato River. There's a beautiful yes. paved trail in there as well. Yeah. You, when it comes to sorry, oh, yeah. go on. when it comes to uh, to cycling path, um, we actually have a new series of video that's going to come out every Saturday for the next ten uh, weeks, in which I'm talking with a guy that does great rides. That's multi day mountain biking trips in New Zealand, and we'll talk about those things. So it's just a much shorter video than usual, just a quick insight on each of them, so you can pick which one you want. But that's multi day mountain biking trips, so they're a good exercise as well, but they're not paved. Yes. So paved paved trails tend to be only within urban areas. So uh, like the examples Robin used, like Hamilton um, along the Waikato River or Topo along the alongside the lake. But Auckland, the waterfronts. Yeah, yeah. So most of the trails and probably the better trails, the most scenic trails, are um, on kind of well maintained but like gravelly sort of. It, well, it's kind of like compact dirt. Um, it's not really gravel, but it's more like compact dirt, so it's easy to cycle on or um or with a with a mountain bike but easy to cycle on or, or run on so um i would i would try to lean more toward those trails because that's where the most beautiful scenery will be and there's a ton of them that are like that but when it comes to paved trails you actually are quite limited 
Okay, remember, guys, only five more minutes in live session. So submit name suggestion for this Kiwi bird right here. I will put a survey on both YouTube and Facebook coming up soon uh, at the end of this video. So, you know, give me 10 minutes at the end of the video, video and I'll do that. Slacker. Wow. <laughs> Adil says, Maureen, hi, Adil, thank you for joining us another week. Uh, he says, Maureen, hi, Robin and Laura. Live stream is buffering quite a lot today. Oh, I'm sorry about oh, that, no. guys. Um, it's probably because I uploaded by like 12 videos in the last couple of days and our internet provider is like, they're using too much internet. Let's stop them. Yeah. Uh, or it's just YouTube being a pain as usual. Extreme Talota says, um, uh, he's talking about his uh, friend, which is becoming a referee. He says, he's good. He's got up to 16 kilometers running and now 24 kilometers. So 40 kilometer run. And I'm just 50 kilometers I do Ooh. in a day. Wow. That's, I that's do about, a lot. I do about 16 meters a day running. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good with 16. I think I think you you meant to say meters, not kilometers, right? <laughs> uh, Kimi Lawrence says, a prime minister, Justin Trudeau, has said yesterday that any Canadian that wants a COVID-19 vaccine should have one by September 2021. So my fingers remain crossed for my return to New Zealand in 2022. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes, 2022 seems like a, a, a reasonable expectation for when to come to New Zealand. I tend to agree with that. Yeah. There is going to be gradual opening, I guess. You know, and we think that the border is going to gradually open before that. But, you know, it's going to open, but then you have to stay in quarantine anyway and all this kind of thing. So it's not a feasible way to travel to New Zealand, let's yeah. be honest. If you have to do the, the quarantine for two weeks and, you know. So, yeah, the border may open before, but in a feasible travel manner, 2022 is a very reasonable expectation. Yeah. Uh, we tend to, yeah, we tend to be exactly in the same wavelength with Laura. Karin Alami, hey, thank you very much for joining another week as well. So many like familiar names right here. I yeah. love it. Um, and Karin says, hey guys, nice to catch you live again. You are awesome, Karin. Thank you. Nice to have you on board one more week. You just arrive at the end. So you may have to just rewind and kind of hang out with us, but not live, sadly. Yeah. Uh, Kiwi Loren says, not buffering on my end. It may be your internet connection, Adil. It, it's it's for like everybody is different sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's even buffering for us, which is literally a life of like seeing ourselves, which yeah, is really like, odd. How does that work? Yeah, how, how is it possible? <laughs> and uh, yes, Extreme Talota, I know you didn't mean meters, you meant kilometers, but I was hoping you meant meters because it does look like too much. It is a, a long, <laughs> long way. 50 kilometers running. Oh my God. Yeah. All right, so a couple of things that's going to happen this week for you guys. So first up, I will be posting uh, some surveys on both our Facebook page. So you may want to check us on Facebook and give us a cheeky like to go vote vote for um, uh, the name for this Kiwi Bird. Ah, for this Kiwi Bird. Another thing that's going to start this week as well is that on Saturday, I'm going to be posting the first of a 10-part video series in which I sit with a guy, which his name is Gary. He's from an app called Great Rides App. And basically what he's done is that he's done an app that covers all the great rides around New Zealand, which is mountain biking rides, multi-days. And we literally talk about like four or five minutes, basic questions like, you know, is it suitable for families? How hard is it? Where does it start? Where does it finish? What's the facilities? Just giving you a bit of an understanding about 10 of the best multi-day mountain biking rides in the, in the country. So we'll add that to the normal schedule in which we have, you know, some of the New Zealand's biggest gap year, some travel tips and that. Bam, mountain biking every Saturday for the next 10 weeks. So I hope that you guys are going to find that super useful. Yeah. Uh, so yes, that's what's happening with the channel. Uh, we do have some more travel tips coming up as well. We're recording some extra videos for you guys, which is awesome. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Well, do we have some more questions? Uh, Karin says, thank you very much. Uh, you are like my family indeed. Azul oh. is the name for the queue, but yes, I know it <laughs> yeah. is It is number it's two on, on the list. list right here. So that's the list of all the names that you guys gave us. It's number two on the list for Azul. So it here will you go, be Karin. put into the polls. Yeah, so, so you get can your vote friend for it. So yeah, so make sure you share the, 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 the voting survey and everything. <laughs> get your friend and family to back the name that you chose. Yes, um, very important. The, the most important vote you will make this, this year. Yes, <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh i like how silly we can be on the internet uh, it's a place where you can forget all your worries i love it uh, it's kiwi, not usually <laughs> kiwi loren says i forgot uh, that the chocolate is spelled whitakers isn't it yes uh -huh. it is spelled that way yes so if you were saying whitaker because yeah, you so i'll put both <laughs> and, and you decide which one you want to vote for um you kiwi loren so here you go um and yeah karen says you are the best she's talking to you Oh, there you go. You're the best. And Anthony, <laughs> I think she's talking about you. 
And Anthony <laughs> Comstock says, I hope you stay safe and have a nice week, but I'm staying until the end. But you know what? That's a great way to wrap it up. So thank yeah. you very much, guys, for hanging out one whole hour with us again. If you are watching that and it's just a recording, it's okay. You can put your uh, question in the comment on this video and we'll pick them up and answer them for you. And if you want to join us live, Laura, tell yeah. people. We have um, a link in the description below, which will tell you when we're next live in your time zone. So that's easier to go through than us trying to tell you and trying to guess where you live and what your time zone is. So just check out in the link below. But otherwise, we also have our upcoming, um, oh. sorry, otherwise we do have our upcoming lessons um, um, scheduled in YouTube so if you are subscribed to us click on the uh, notification bell so you get notifications when we come live and check out nzpocketguide.com which is um, our website that goes along with this YouTube channel and it literally has thousands of articles to help you plan your trip to New Zealand so if you do want to get any elaboration of any of the things that we've talked about during this live session and want to know more information about traveling to New Zealand we have it all on nzpocketguide.com in the meantime, you guys stay safe. Michael says, has a great week. Looking forward to the new Cycle Track videos. And uh, Karen says, I love you guys. So here you we go, love both you of too. you. Okay, stay safe, everybody. And we see you next week at 8 a.m. on Sunday, New Zealand time. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye.